Welcome back to part three of the B-17 adventure. I've got the cockpit done. Uh, this video will focus on some of the things that uh, I did to make the cockpit turn out the way it is. It's not perfect, like everything I do is not perfect, and there are things that I would change if I could. But uh, this one came out pretty close to, to what I had pictured. Uh, my work on the fabric wasn't, uh, needs a little work on uh, with my milliput skills. I may get some epoxy putty in case I run into this uh, type of application in the future. Maybe that'll that'll work uh, a little bit better than the milliput. Milliput's just hard to work with. So let's get on with the video and at the end I'll show you the finished product. Here are the resin control columns that the customer sent me. I think they are turned out pretty well. I think once they get painted they're going to look pretty sharp. They got a lot more detail than the kit parts. They've got the molded on boots. There's a um, scribed Boeing logo in the center of the column there. I don't know if you can see that center of the wheel. What I'll probably end up doing is when I when I paint this, I'll paint the, the wheel black and then uh, I'll use a white oil wash to uh, to bring out that that logo on the on the on the uh, the wheel. The molding had a real thin uh, wire that went down the side and then you were supposed to add your own lead wire coming from the the little instrument dial and what I did is I just sanded that off and uh, took the wire all the way down I think it's look it, 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 it'll look a lot better there was a little red button on the pilot side that was molded in but it had a lot of flash and it just it Instead of just spending, you know, a long time cleaning it up, I just cut it off, drilled a hole, and put some stretch sprue in there. But yeah, these are going to look really good. I'll uh, get them painted up with the rest of the cockpit, and uh, they should look a lot better than the kit part. I've got these oxygen tanks here, <clears throat> and they don't have any straps on them. So when I attach them to the uh, this the side of the, the cockpit walls, I want to I want to recreate these straps like you see here so what I'm doing uh, this guy uses um, aluminum foil or uh, bare metal foil but I'm using tape I think it's just a little bit easier and a little bit thicker so I'm just using Tamiya tape and I got my Infini cutting mat here which is one of my favorite tools and I'm just adding the straps. And one thing I, I don't want to do is cover up these holes because I'm going to need those to to glue onto the little nubs that are on the, the side of the uh, cockpit walls. So I am just adding these straps. Not difficult to do, but it is a little time consuming. Because I have at least 12 of them to do, and then there's some some other ones that I think go throughout the the plane. So I'm just going to go ahead and do them all at one time. And as you can see, it's fairly easy to do, especially with this mat, this uh, cutting mat, because I can get the strips of tape the exact same width every time. If you do a lot of modeling and you don't have one of these, you need to get one. I think it was, I don't know, 13 bucks or so. Can't exactly remember. But well worth the money. And uh, when I paint these, <clears throat> what's good about, it, it, these, are, these are little toothpicks that I got, or extra long toothpicks that I got at Walmart. Every time I go, I pick up a pack, but they're invaluable, especially for painting little little parts like this. They fit right in the holes. I use them for bombs and painting other little items. So this is as simple as cutting the little strips, peeling them off, and placing them down. And the reason I'm doing this before I paint, these are going to be uh, green color. The uh, same color as the interior. And the reason I'm putting them down before I paint these yellow 
is so the, uh, the Tamiya tape doesn't seem to stick as well, in my opinion, to a painted surface as it does this plastic. Not that these are going to, you're not going to handle these because obviously they're going to be inside the plane. So there's a little risk of them coming off. But just to be sure, I put them on beforehand. And I try not to touch the sticky side. That's why I'm using tweezers. Because uh, when you, you get the oil from your hands onto the onto the sticky side of the tape, it detacks it a little bit. And I want to prevent that from happening. So I handle these with my hands as little as possible, at least on the sticky side. You can see there. Nice little, nice little straps. Okay, guys, I've got the cockpit all painted up, basically all the parts painted. What I'm going to do now is uh, do some detailing with oil paint, some shading, and uh, and weathering with the oil paint. I've got a clear coat on everything. Got my fabric all painted. I got pretty much everything in the base coat of paint. And I just wanted to show you how these turned out, these um, oxygen tanks. They turned out pretty well. What I ended up doing is after I painted these yellow, I was going to paint each individual strap. Well, it was really hard to do and the paint wasn't really working out for me. So what I did, I just, I just took off the pieces of tape, laid out some more tape on my Infini cutting mat, and um, painted them all dark green and then put them on afterwards so it's a nice sharp there's a nice sharp uh, line there and I think they look a ton better than what they would have done if I tried to hand paint all these straps Let's see that. But yeah and these are gonna go along here and I think that'll give some a nice visual contrast in the cockpit. The seats turned out really well. We're gonna add some shading. I'm gonna try to tone down this yellow color just a little bit. And then after I get it, get uh, some oil paint on there, then we'll put the decal on. It says, uh, there's like a decal that says US Air Corps on it. So I'll do that. I got the fabric and it doesn't look real great right now, but I think once I get some oil paint in there it will look pretty good so that's what we're gonna do I'll start off by doing the uh, show you how I do the wood grain basically I got my oil paint on the cardboard and the cardboard helps suck some of that um, oil out so my paint dries a little faster so I'm just gonna take a couple different tones of brown I've got black buff sepia um, so, uh, darker brown color, and then raw umber. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the raw umber and the brown, and I'm just going to, with a thin brush, make some stripes. And <clears throat> I've started working more with oil paint for more than just washes. And I really like the results. It's so easy to work with. And you know, I've got a clear coat on here, so if I make a mistake, I can just wipe it off. And these are the Aptalung 502 paints. They're really good. Okay. I may add some. I may add some uh, sepia in here just to give it another different tone. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I got these stiff bristly type brushes. And I've kind of cut them to where it's uneven at the end. So I'm going to dip it in some thinner and now what I'm going to do is just kind of st st 
streak it and play with it until I get that wood grainy look. And it's okay if I get it on the outside of the wood part because what I'll do is I'll come back with a with a cotton swab. And wipe that off on the on the outside there where I'm I went over. And that's all there is to it. And I think that looks pretty good. And it's gonna be back in the back behind the behind the uh cockpit so you're not going to see it that much anyway. Now what I'm going to do is take my q-tip and I can wipe off all around there. And once this dries I'll overcoat it and then I can come back and paint the rest of the details in. Like the um, like either a dark gray or a uh, silver on the the door handle there Q-tips are amazing Got just a little bit, rubbed a little bit off right there. We'll just come back and play with it a little bit more. As you can see, oil paints are so easy to work with. And then if I want, if I want to add some darker tones, maybe make it a little more yellow, I can come back and take some uh, to me a clear yellow or clear orange and I can I can make it a little more orange once that once that dries. That's all there is to it for making the wood green. Alright. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work on the fabric. And it kind of looks like crap right now. It almost looks like poop smeared on the uh, the side walls. But I'm going to change that with some shading. And I think I'll probably go with maybe some sepia. Sepia is basically like a dark, almost like a brown, orangey type mix. And I'm just going to... This is going to basically be dry brushing. So I'm taking the dark and I'm putting it inside of the, the low spots. Okay, and then I'm going to take a stiffer brush. I'm just going to blend it in, almost like I'm dry brushing. I want to make this somewhat subtle, I don't want it in your face. Because then I'm going to add some highlights with the buff or the, a, a lighter color. Once I get a flat coat on this, 
it'll uh, the flat coat seems to really bring out the shading. And one thing that I've learned is that you can't be afraid of it looking like crap at certain stages. Because it may look like crap now, but when I'm done, I know that it'll it'll uh, it'll look the way I want it. Okay, I'm gonna get a different smaller brush, and I'm gonna take some of this buff, and I'm gonna hit the highlights. So let's put some highlights up here, along here. Yeah, this is a crappy brush. I've got a whole set of brushes that I use for weathering. They're just um, older brushes. You can see this one's kind of kind of messed up. I take them out of my regular paintbrush arsenal and put them in my weathering if if they get too bad because I don't really care what happens to them. I really enjoy this part and what's a nice <clears throat> one of the things I enjoy to kind of break up the monotony of gluing pieces together and doing it this way um, you know building and painting and building and painting kind of it just breaks up the monotony of gluing pieces together and makes it a little more enjoyable I'm gonna take a different brush I'm just going to try to blend these highlights in. And again, this is a dry brush. It's there's no thinners. I'm I'm not using any thinners. Now what I think I'm going to do is add some bright white. So I've got some white in here. I've got faded white. And snow white. We're going to add some snow white to the very, to make a very cute highlight. I kind of feel like Bob Ross when I do this. Just at the, just at the tips. Give it that little extra depth. It doesn't take much. in I think I'm going to come back and do some just straight black. 
in just a few spots and black is really can really be overpowering so you got to be careful with it but if I mess up I can just wipe it off tone it down And that may be a little too overpowering, so we'll just blend it in a little bit more. And it's subtle, but once I get a, a flat coat on there, they'll, you'll really be able to tell the difference. And you can kind of see the difference here just in doing that little bit. And I may just add a little more light. All right, I'm gonna do the the rest of it. Um, let's see, I may add some, try to do the seats and we'll see how that looks. Get my brushes here. Maybe a little bit of sepia. Now with this bright yellow, I don't wanna go too hard. Just a little bit. To dirty it up, and I may have just give it a little bit of grime. Get down here, and then what I can do is I can come back with a Q-tip. Clean this up a little bit. Basically, this is almost like a wash. And this is just going to give it a little grime because you're in a, a bomber that's seen some use and you don't want a bright, clean seat. see just the difference a little bit of difference that makes kind of tones it down a little bit and I may work with that and put some buff and some white on there just to kind of tone the yellow down so I'm going to continue working on this and then uh, we'll come back uh, when it's all finished and I'll show you what it looks like <clears throat> one last thing that I like to do <clears throat> I've got the photo etch on I've got uh, the flat coat on my final flat coat so the only thing that's left is assembly, but before I do that, what I like to do is, um, with Gloss Mod Podge, is take that 
and dip a little bit into the dials to give it a glass-like appearance. Now I've used um, like a high gloss acrylic. I've used um, Future, but to be honest with you, the Mod Pod seems to create a um, a better look. And basically, all I'm doing and it's pretty easy with this photo etch because there's a, an indention where the dial actually is. Just put a little bit of this Mod Podge in there, and what happens? It dries to a glossy, glass-like surface. So they'll, it'll look like uh, the dials are behind glass. And just one of those small details that it's not like you're going to notice it right away, but when you look in there in the cockpit, you're definitely going to see the reflection of the glass. It's going to give it a little bit more of a realistic appearance. And I'll not only do this for, for the instrument panel here, but I'll also do it for all the other photo etch pieces that I got in here that have dials on them. And this will dry really quick. Dun, 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 the finished cockpit. Here's one side. Well, I don't have this glued together. I just just uh, dry fit it in place just so you can see what it what it's going to look like. The wood door. I went over the wood with a uh, with Tamiya clear orange just to give it a little orange appearance, and I kind of scratched it up to give it a, a worn weathered look to it. And it's gonna come apart. But as you can see, there's a a lot of detail in this thing. And then I added the the all the photo etch, which some of it you can't see back in there, but but it's in there. The instrument panel. And if you tilt it just right, you can see the reflection of the the glass or the glue that I put in the clear Mod Podge that I put in for the for the dials. Seat belts, they were homemade. The uh, one of the photo etch kits that were supplied with the uh, from the from the customer had a bunch of buckles in there. So I just made up my own um, seat belts using testers tape this time, which has kind of got a, almost a translucent green to it. And then I after I did the riveting detail, then what I did was uh, uh, brush on a thinned coat of sepia ink and then a little bit of brown on the, the to represent leather on the, the leather belt right there. I used photo etch um, Boeing labels for the, 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 for the, for the wheel. Instead of paint, trying to I tried to paint in the little uh, inscribed area that the resin part included, but I couldn't really get the paint to stick, so I decided just to uh, glue the photo etch part on there, and I think it looks pretty good. Yep, there's a lot of detail in there, fellas. Here's the side. And here is the back of the bombardier's compartment, which also doubles for the instrument panel and the firewall for the cockpit. And I think the fabric turned out okay. I still have to improve my skills in that regard, but uh, I think it turned out okay. My next video will be the rest of the fuselage. I've got the, uh, I'll probably just lump it all to one video with the radio room and the uh, turret gunners and the rear turret gunner and maybe the bomb bay. I don't know what I'm going to do with that because I have to mount it on a base. And the bomb bay would be an ideal place to put a post for mounting it on the base. So I'll get a hold of the owner and, and I, I think he, he didn't. I wasn't sure what he said about having the uh, Bombay open. So if he, if we can close it up, then I can use that area 
to plant the post for the display base. So I will see you on the next video.